Hey guys, back here with another video. This time I'm going to talk about Sony's new RX100 Mark III. And for just basic reference and comparison, I have my older, original RX100. Now there was a model that came between the two, obviously, the Mark II. I kind of waited and decided not to get the RX100 Mark II just because the upgrade from the first one to the second one didn't seem that big of a, a jump. Although, from... Even from the 2 to the 3 is a large jump, as I'll explain. 1 to the 3 is definitely worth the jump. The main thing is the fact that the uh, even with the RX 102, even though it's a flip-out screen, this one flips out and what I like to call the selfie mode. So it flips out to 180 degrees like that. Just like the Canon G1X Mark II. Same idea. Got the hinge here, so you can shoot over a crowd, down, selfie mode. The RX100, the original, did not have any of that. It's just a fixed screen. But I still like the RX100. It's, it's a little thinner. It's more pocketable. It's lighter. I guess that's where the advantages end. So I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so even with the lens extended out, the RX100 Mark III is larger than the original. The Mark II is still a little, little larger as well. As you see, the lens protruded out a little more, and I'm going to get to that. It's one of the main features, the selling point for me anyway. So from the... I believe the Mark 1 and Mark 2 shared the same zoom range of 28 to 100 millimeter and it went from f1.8 to 4.9. Now the new one, the Mark 3, has a 24 to 70 f1.8 to 2.8. So it's pretty good. It's, you're pretty much getting a 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. Because 1.8 starts out at 24 millimeter, but as soon as you go to like 26 or 28 millimeter, it goes to 2.8. Just like on the Mark 1 that I discussed before, is that 1.8 is only at the 28 wide millimeter. As soon as you get to 30, it starts to get darker. Although, with the Mark 3, I do like the fact that it maxes out at 2.8. So even at 70 millimeter, you're going to have f2.8, which is nice. The 1.8. Again, it's only at 24 to 26 millimeter. I maybe 28, but still, you're getting it. You're still gonna get it at 2.8, so that's something to consider. And that's evidenced by the larger opening in the lens. I'll show you that here. So as you can see, or maybe not. See how the Mark III has a larger front end there? It's not really noticeable on the video just because I'm using a wide angle lens to film it. But it's, it, is not, it is definitely noticeable. It's the main thing. The lens is pretty awesome. The, and that's in the Mark III. As mentioned before, the Mark I and Mark II still show the only the uh, 28 to 100. Now this only goes to 24 to 70. As you notice, it doesn't go out to the 100. I would have liked to have at least gone out to 100, but I'll take the wider end of the 24 millimeter any day, just because I can add or get more of a scene in. This starts at 24. This starts out at 28, just like the Mark One and Two. 24 millimeter f 1.8, awesome, fast, wide angle lens. 70 millimeter, 100 millimeter. I don't mind. I mean, it's a little compromised. Some people like it, some people don't. Sure, I would like to have the reach of the G1X Mark II, which has the, I believe it goes to 120. So, I mean, that is nice, but it's a much larger camera. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, to be able to get this in a pocketable form factor, I understand why Sony made that decision. The other thing that's nice is this does have a pop-up flash. Uh, it does have a pop-up flash, but it also has a pop-up viewfinder which the Mark I and Mark II did not have. And that was one of the bigger complaints. So there you go, when you pop it up, it powers on. Uh, yeah, you 
can kind of see it. So there's an eye sensor that senses when your eye is near it. Which is the weird thing is when you close it down. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you something. So when you pop it up, you got to push this out as well. And there's a diopter adjustment for your eyes if you want to change it. So you got to close that. And when you push this down, this actually powers off the camera. Just kind of a weird... I guess it's a feature, but I guess <laughs> if you're shooting and you want to use the uh, larger LCD and you push that down, you wonder why your camera shut powers down. I don't know. Maybe in a future firmware they can address that and have let you actually choose that option. So that's the other big thing. The optical, or the I'm sorry, the pop-up electronic viewfinder and the 24 to 70 lens. The other thing that this has is a three-stop neutral density filter built in, which is nice. Mark One does not have one. I don't think the Mark Two had one either. And what that does is, if you want to shoot in bright daylight and you want to use a larger aperture to get the nice bokeh and you know blurred background, you use the neutral density filter. It stops it down. You're able to use a wider aperture and still maintain the shutter at a reasonable speed. So that's the main advantage of that. And also if you're shooting video, if you want that nice creamy background, use a neutral density filter and open up the lens and shutter will still compensate for that. So that's pretty nice. Let's see what else do I like about it. Oh, it also has a clean HDMI out. So if you want to output your video to a recorder without having it go through the camera processing. I've never used that. I'm not a big video guy, but I'm sure people in the industry would and know about that would probably take advantage of it. The other thing it does have is it uses the XAVCS video codec, which records 50 meg megabits. And that's a pretty big jump from the standard 28 megabits found on Mark I and Mark II in AV AVC HD. This is XAVCS at 50 meg. Um, you will also definitely need to use a high-speed card to take advantage of that. It kind of kills me when I see people buy nice cameras and they cheap out on these cheap cards. Guys, come on. <laughs> you have a five dollars $700 camera, pony up and pay extra 80 bucks for a nice card, huh? <laughs> so I use the uh, SanDisk X uh, Extreme Pro. Um, so yeah, if you want to use the new XAVCS codec, definitely use the high-speed cards. Um, the other thing is nice about the video on this is it uses a what they call full sensor readout, also found on the the larger Sony RX10. And what that does is mostly when cameras take video, they use uh, a smaller portion of the sensor. They don't use the full sensor, so it drops lines. Real world performance, you're gonna get sharper, more detailed video. And I'm gonna do some video samples hopefully and post them up for you. Full sensor readout. So yeah, Sony really did a pretty good job of packing a lot of features in a small camera. The newer one also uses the Bions X processor, whereas the older one, Mark One or Mark II, used just the Bions. Um, I don't know what that means in real real world performance, but I'm sure the newer processor is zippier and faster. The let's see what else what I can talk about here. Mark One and Mark Three do not have a hot shoe. The Mark Two had a multifunction hot shoe, and what that was basically used for is to plug in the electronic uh, viewfinder. Mark Three doesn't need it because it has one built in. Mark One did not have a hot shoe. I don't know if that was a big selling point for people. It didn't really excite me too much. Um, and of course, this one has Wi-Fi with NFC. Just like the other Mark II, I believe. Mark I did not have that. The One of the drawbacks is this only shoots 320 shots per charge. The Mark II shot 350. And a Mark I, 330. And I think it's because of the uh, electronic viewfinder. The EVF. They said if you use the EVF, it actually drops down to 230 shots. So keep that in mind. Size-wise... The Mark III is chunkier of the three bunch. It is a 
comes in at 290 grams. The Mark II came in at 281, and this guy here is 240. This is a more compact of the three. Um, dimensions on this guy is 102 by 58 by 36 millimeter. The Mark II was 102 by 58 by 38 millimeter. And the Mark III is 102 by 58 by 41 millimeter. And I think that's because of the flip out screen and the larger lens, of course. Uh, let's see what else I can talk about here. This has auto ISO and manual mode, the other two don't. That's if you want to lock your shutter and aperture in, the ISO will adjust to keep that. And that's useful for video. Um, the startup time is increased too. The startup time on the Mark III is 1.6 seconds from power to startup from your first shot. The Mark II is 2.2 seconds. So considerably faster. I don't know what the Mark I did. Uh, let's see. This also has three types of stabilization. It has optical image stabilization. It has active steady shot with a 1.16 crop. And intelligent auto steady shot, which crops in a 1.29 crop. So you got three different, so basically one's optical and two are digital. And to, to accomplish that, it's going to crop in a little more, so you're not going to get as wide as you'd like on your field of view. But that's something to consider. This also has zebra peaking. Tells you when your highlights are getting blown out. Useful for video, I guess. Um, let's see. Pretty much, those are the, pretty much the specs on it. I do like the fact that it still fits in your pocket. Now, on my Oakley sunglass test, that, tell, you know, that determines how it fits in your pocket. This guy slides in much easier. This is the Mark I. So I'll just demonstrate that here. No problem, so it just slides right in. That's Mark I. It is the smaller of the bunch. You know, I was going to sell this, but I decided to keep it. Oh, the batteries are interchangeable too, so the same battery between 1, 2, and 3. Good job, Sony. Don't us make us buy extra batteries. Mark III, because it's a little chunkier, the lens protrudes out a little more. And the flip out LCD makes it a little more challenging to get in. But you know what? It fits in there. So it passed, it passed the pocketability test. A little chunkier, but still can be done. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's pretty cool. Pop a flash. Pop up flash. Pop up EV. So this is what it looks like in full full Monty mode. So when everything is extended out here, the lens, the flash, and the EVF. See what I mean how it powers down when you plus the, push the uh, electronic viewfinder down? I guess that's handy if you think you're going to forget to turn your camera off. That's with the flash up. It kind of folds down on itself. Flash down. Still pretty svelte with everything closed down, but once you start popping things up, getting some used to it, actually. It's kind of, there you go. So that also powers the camera on, as you see, when I pop up the EVF. And remember to push that out. Again, the flash. It's right there. For a minute, I thought they put the switch on the LCD, but no, it's actually on the body itself. It 
It's a really dinky flash too. At least I guess it's centered over the lens, but it's a red eye machine waiting to happen. I don't use onboard flash much. Only time I do use it is if I want to trigger an external flash via optical slave. But I like that it kind of folds out of the way. As you remember on this guy here. That's right, the flash is actually activated electronically on the Mark I. There's no physical switch. So there you have it guys, the Sony RX100 Mark III. Is it a worth the upgrade? Yeah, I think so. If, if you're coming from the Mark I, definitely. Mark II? Yeah, if you want the, the better video capability and the wider 24mm at f1.8, definitely go for it. Other than that, uh, you know, it's it's up to you. I mean, it's priced a little higher. They're, they're starting this guy a little higher than the Mark II and the Mark I. You could get the Mark I really good now for a good deal. You could get it for like, I think I saw for 540 550 So that's not bad, even 500 bucks if you look hard enough. The Mark II, I don't know. Since Mark III came out, it might have dropped a few, but... Yeah, so it's got a... Menu structure is a little bit different here. Yeah, I got something to look at. It does have the fun jog dial. Got the tiles across. So, yep, there you have it. Um, you know, what's ironic is the box that the RX100 Mark III came in is actually smaller than the RX100. Let's see if I can show you. The new improved. Not quite in frame. <laughs> but yeah. And I guess they write it as RX100 M3. Even the charger is a little bit different. I don't have the Mark II, but I have the Mark I charger. So this is the Mark I charger here. Folds out. Yeah, it's got the standard USB. The Mark III charger. Little square guy and it flips out like so. Something different, I guess. Battery is still the same, which is nice. Memory card. No external charger again, guys. Still got a charge with inside the camera. You can get, you know, the can buy the external charger on your own, but it does not come with one. It's not a huge deal for me. I mean, I could just plug in any USB and plug it into the side here. So you got the different, got the different ports here. Plug the power in, you're good to go.
All right, guys, that should do it for now. I know this video went a little longer than I want, but I try to do it in one take. That way you get an idea of what, what, what the...